My name is Lucy Duckworth and I'm Chair of Minister and Clergy Sexual Abuse Survivors, or MAXAS as you may know it. I'm also a partner, a sister, a friend, a teacher, a student, a colleague, a campaigner and a child abuse survivor. The problem I have is that most people only see the last one. I was abused by two priests throughout my childhood from the Catholic and the Anglican Church. I've told the police and the church, but neither have acted. Both men, one of whom already has a conviction for abuse, are still living with unfettered access to children on a state and church pension, calling themselves clergymen. Oh. Why? Because of their taboo. They silenced an entire community, a community that is scared. And the other girls that were abused have asked me, if I come forward, will I be supported? Will I be judged? Will I be made to believe it's my fault? And will I get a conviction? And I can't answer those questions. So they don't come forward and these men live happily ever after, despite the destruction they have caused so many. And we as survivors live on the sidelines. For me, it's that culture that has to change right now. I'm 33 and my colleagues were talking about safeguarding procedures that should have been put in place before I was even born. Had they been listened to, I wouldn't be here today, and perhaps those men I told you about would be where they belong, in jail. And Maxas, we support people who were abused in church context of all denominations, but the majority of our work at the moment is with the Church of England and the Catholic Church. I'd like to tell you a bit more about the cover-ups within the church, but I'm not sure you'd believe me. We would. Since the inquiry has been announced, we've had a 400% increase in people that have required our services. Since the inquiry has been announced, and I can only speak for myself on this one, but some of you might agree, my life has been turned upside down, with hopes of change, fears of no change, and revisiting the memories of the abuse that scarred my life forever, including the unprecedented amount of work that's generated for our charity. While of a new society look on with no idea what this could actually mean for the 25% of us, that those that live with abuse every day, and for the generations to come that hopefully will never experience the pain we do. The mistrust of authority and above all the anger are things we've all experienced and we seem to play them out among us, much to the glee of the authorities and the abusers. Society is scared. Non-survivors and survivors alike. They're scared of what could be uncovered and they're scared of knowing that it happened on our watch. Scared of saying it happened to me and scared of seeing the pain we're in. But we have to face that fear. We have to own it and most importantly help others to own it so that we can hear and learn from the experiences of those who were abused. This is why I believe this inquiry is the best chance we have. It's not perfect, and we don't even yet know if it's going to be independent, but we need to fight to make sure it is. Without it, no laws will change. Without it, the institutions, the schools, the churches and the government will, allow to, will continue to allow abusers to operate in their midst and cover their tracks because it's in their culture. We get that it's scary. We're scared too. But if we don't see how bad it is, we can't stop it getting worse. We need to, this inquiry, we need to make sure it's independent and we need to make sure it's not infiltrated by those who hurt us. Yeah. We need it to conclude that this culture is not okay. It's time to say no. We are not going to allow this tolerance of abuse within our society to continue. And no, we are not going to let those who hurt us irreparably hurt our children in the same way. And no, we are not going to let those who are responsible for the abuse, as well as those who covered it up and failed to report it, get away with it. No. They will be held to account. Recently, when I was talking to people who aren't survivors or campaigners, I saw the problem. We talk about Jimmy Savile and Rolf Harris and Liam Britton and Cyril Smith and we talk about the MPs and the entertainment industry and the teachers and it's all very repulsive and it's very scary to think that children are still being abused by the people in power and that this is happening on our watch. And we talk about it online and we talk about it in the news, which incidentally is often inaccurate, and we tell ourselves that we have dealt with the problem. 
But not one law has changed. Not one shred of evidence has officially been taken into the inquiry. And we don't know what, if any, support is being put in place to help people like me who live with the pain every day. The great British public think that it's a problem that's been dealt with. And we must not forget that it's in a lot of people's interest for this inquiry not to happen. And it's in an awful lot more people's interest for us survivors to be continued to be labelled as survivors and be separated from society. To be told that post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental health problem that we should feel ashamed by and that it's our fault. If my house got broken into, the insurance would pay for the broken window and the burglar would have a high chance of being prosecuted. My childhood got broken into. Not only do I have to pay to fix it, the burglar won't get prosecuted and I have to believe that it was my fault. This culture has to change and it's everyone's responsibility to make that happen. It doesn't matter whether you have children or not, if you work in the sector or not, if you're a survivor or not, this is your responsibility. We are on the cusp of one of the most important social movements of our history. And those of us that know that have a duty to inform those of us who don't. It will affect generations to come. It will save us millions in the NHS, in the mental health services, the education system and the criminal justice systems. Not as many children will need ed educational intervention. Children and adults won't end up in A&E, having to spend the rest of their lives wondering what they could possibly have done that was so wrong at such a young age that deserved this, and why no one has helped them then or now. Those three quarters of the population who weren't abused must become four quarters. It's a wonderful, achievable vision, but don't go anywhere because our work is not done yet. Apartheid was tackled when white people took responsibility and women only got the vote when men started listening to. And look how far both those groups still have to go. Child abuse is at the very start of that journey and our predecessors have put their foot in the door, but we need the whole of society to help us push it open. We need the whole of society to say it is wrong that our children can be raped and abused in school and no one has a legal duty to report it. We need the whole of our society to say it is wrong that private institutions such as schools and churches have no legal requirement to adhere to child protection policies or release the files they keep on survivors and their abusers. And we need the whole of society to stand up and say it is wrong that the children who are raped grow up with a higher statistical chance of failing at education, having a less successful criteria, career, having more serious illnesses, dying earlier, and being judged and made to feel it was their fault the whole of their lives. Nobody wants this to be the case. We're just too scared to admit that it is. So to those people who aren't abused, I wonder, please question, question everything. Learn, ask, and inform yourself. Abuse, justice, response, survivor, safeguarding. These are all words that we use on a daily basis, but actually they mean a different thing to each person. They mean something different to the survivor, to the safeguard and advisor, and to the abuser. To the lawyers who prosecute and the lawyers who defend. And to the non-survivor who's too scared to ask what they actually mean. We need you to ask the questions you're too scared to and make sure you stick around to hear the answers. Please don't judge and please don't assume. Just hear the answer and ask what needs to be done. You will be repulsed and you will be scared, but that's the only way we can change it. We need people to be as repulsed as we are by what happened to us, and we need people to be as devastated as we are by what happened to us, and we need them to own it and help us carry the weight so that we can make sure that it doesn't happen again. Let survivors know they are not alone. Go to your MP and say you want more action. Ask them for an independent inquiry. Ask the Secretariat for an independent inquiry. Go to your child's school and ask them what safeguarding training they get, who runs it, and then support the hundreds of very small yet expert agencies that are the ones truly fighting for an end to the abuse. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Not the large national charities who make profits and run helplines through their appeal packs and run the risk being lobbied by the establishment. Get involved and talk. Help us break the taboo. 
silence kills, don't comply with it. What happens with this inquiry will affect generations to come and it will be talked about for generations to come. What decisions we make today around child abuse law will save thousands, if not millions of lives in future. And what happens now will be judged by history. Make sure you're on the right side of it. Thank you.